This is Max Goldberg from Living Maxwell. We're outside Spontaneous Celebrations. It's a community center in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. And we're going to talk to someone really interesting tonight. His name is Andrew Kimbrell, and he's the executive director of the Center for Food Safety. They're a nonprofit based in Washington, D.C., that helps to protect the interest, among other things, of uh, organic food. So he's going to get us up to speed about what's going on in D.C. and some important events and some, port, um, some important news and uh, I think it's going to be really informative. So let's go inside to meet him. Well, you know, that's a really complicated question because like everything Obama has done, you know, there's the good side and there's the bad side. It's sort of Jekyll and Hyde, this administration so far. But let's talk about the good stuff first. Kathleen Merrigan, who was really, you know, in many ways, the mother of organic. She was working with Senator Leahy when the Organic Food Production Act that started organic food was introduced and then passed in, in 1990. So she has now been made second in command at the USDA, our US Department of Agriculture, which regulates organic food. So we've got probably the, one of the strongest supporters in the country of organic food right there, right in second place, right uh, under Vilsack at the USDA. So that's amazing and really important and she's already done a lot of really good things including a new pasture rule which really ensures that our our organic dairy has been do being done correctly and is not taken over by sort of factory farm uh, you know dairy stuff so so that's the really good news so you know three cheers for that but we have some problems Monsanto our friends at Monsanto have invaded this administration just like they've invaded past administrations so the number one guy at USDA same place where Kathleen Merrigan is for research is a guy named Beachy. And he's right out of Monsanto, did all of their, a lot of their GMO crop development. And guess what? He's in charge of $120, $130 million of research funding that's supposed to go into sustainable agriculture and organic agriculture research. But that's not where he's been putting it. So why would you put Monsanto as head of the guy who's going to decide where the research money is going to go in when we want to get that research on organic and sustainable agriculture? Not good. Additionally, Unfortunately, Obama has appointed as our trade representative a guy named Siddiqui, right, head of Crop Life, which is a front organization for Monsanto and DuPont and Genta and all the bad boys, as our trade representative. You know what he's doing? He's going to be going around the world pushing, you know what? GMOs and not pushing organic. We asked Cong when, when he went through congressional approval, we asked a member of Congress asking him a simple question. Can you show us one time in your entire career where you have promoted organic food? Just give us one, uh, a newspaper thing, uh, a, a, an interview, a radio show, online. Couldn't give, couldn't give one. He spent his life promoting GMOs. That's not good. And additionally, Michael Taylor, who uh, was the guy who pushed through the ruling in 1992 under, under the, that Bush administration that said no mandatory testing, no mandatory labeling for genetically engineered foods, that guy has now been made a big wig at FDA. So I could go on. There's a number of other unfortunate, like our USAID appointee, but basically it's Jekyll and Hyde. You know, I think the, 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 the administration's position is we're going to have organic and biotech coexist, and we're going to have people that, you know, represent both of those in the agencies. It ain't going to work. But thank God we do have some organic people in there as well. There's no question that the number of Monsanto people and the number of people that represent ag business have had a disproportionate number of appointees in this administration. You know, maybe uh, certainly not as bad as under Bush, no question. But is it the kind of change we'd hoped for? Absolutely not. Yeah, they're really big. It's a really good question. I mean, what people need to understand is that Monsanto tried to invade the entire alfalfa market a few years ago by spreading their Roundup Ready. These are the crops that can tolerate a huge amount of Roundup into alfalfa, which doesn't use much herbicide anyway, by the way. But they wanted to take over the alfalfa market, which they'd never really been part of. We stopped them cold in court, said no more sale, no more planting. Sorry, Monsanto, you lose. And they did lose. They, they lost at every level of court. Now they've taken it to the Supreme Court and will be arguing it at the end of April. This is critical because if, if there will be contamination, bees, wind, you know, pollinators, every vector you can imagine is going to be spreading that GMO pollen from the GMO alfalfa to conventional and or, or, organic alfalfa, right? And that means organic dairy, the entire organic dairy industry that we all depend on is threatened. 
And, you know, if, if the Obama administration and the prior Bush administration, which it continues, the idea is that we don't care, we're going to let that GMO stuff out there. And, you know, we're going to try and push and push and push. Even though we've lost in the courts, we're going to keep pushing to get GMO alfalfa out there. If they succeed, that could imperil the entire organic dairy industry. That is, th those are the stakes we're looking at right now. And you know, we're going to keep fighting, and, 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 and the farmers we're, we're representing are going to keep fighting to make sure that doesn't happen. But, you know, people should certainly get on our website, Center for Food Safety. Uh, dot org and, and participate. You, know, you can send your letters in until until March 3rd. You can still send your letters into the USDA and say, don't you dare approve this, and you need to look at all the economic and environmental impacts. And if they really were to look at those economic impacts on the entire organic industry, they would never approve this product, never. You know, I, I think you've got a really good point. I mean, you know, I work in Washington. I've worked there for 25 years. We've got offices in California, too, but I spent a lot of time in Washington, and it's more of a corporate oligarchy mm -hmm. in Washington than a democracy. And we all get it. Let's get real about that. Let's not be naive. Okay. okay. Nevertheless, particularly when there's a Democratic administration, you can make a difference. Remember that when a, 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 a USDA Commissioner Glickman in 1997, December, said, we're going to add GMO, or we might add GMO's sewage sludge irradiation to organic. He actually made that suggestion, and he, they were all going to go for it. 300,000 of us wrote in and said, don't you dare do that to organic. Don't you dare. He pulled back, and with the help of some of our friends, GMOs, irradiation, and suicides became prohibited methods. And so it can make a difference, especially at the agency level. Not so much in Congress sometimes, but you know, when, you're, when you're commenting to the agencies, they get three, 400,000, 200,000 comments. They take notice, and it also really makes a difference locally. You know, if you're having a local situation, a local uh, pro uh, pro uh, pro proposition or proposal at your city or state level, it makes more and more difference. The smaller you get, the more people you can, you know, you, the more constituency you can get roused up about this. But again, on this alfalfa thing, the comment period to USDA to say, don't you dare approve this product, you know, is March 3rd. So this gives us a short period of time, but you can certainly comment to USDA and you can do it through our website or others. You know, I don't think Food Inc. has done so much, but I think if you look back now, I mean, the work you're doing, the work so many people are doing, The Future of Food, that great documentary and others, I go everywhere now and people are aware of this issue. And they are angry and they, they say, why isn't it labeled? Why am I not being given a choice? Why isn't that food being tested? That threatens our organic industry. That People are upset, people are angry, and we have seen the difference. We've seen the difference at the local level. Uh, with BGH labeling and states refusing to not allow that labeling, say, yes, you're going to be able to label that. We've also seen it, I think, in, even on our court decisions. You know, we have beaten Monsanto now on, no, there's no GMO wheat. There's no GMO rice. We stopped GMO fish. We stopped these GMO biopharmaceuticals, putting your AIDS vaccines in your corn, right? We've stopped alfalfa. We just won a victory on sugar beets, which is being challenged. We have won all of those, and I think part of it is a whole new wave of understanding that this food offers us nothing. It only offers us risks, and it only increases the amount of poisons that are put in our environment. That word's gotten out, and the pro-organic, I mean, organic's growing, it's the fastest growing sector in American agriculture. So, you know, it's this great moment. I think people see we're at this, this really turning point in the future of food for the 21st century. Are we gonna go that biotech, chemical pollution, monoculture, no diversity, is that where we're gonna go? Like, in the past, no, we're gonna go in this new organic and beyond, because organic is just, after all, the you know, it's the basement, if you will, of the house we're building, which is going to be humane and biodiverse, appropriate scale, local, and socially just. Those are the beyond organic things that we're going to keep fighting for. So we're at this historic moment. I think more and more people are seeing that. Well, Andrew, this has been great. Uh, we learned some wonderful information, some very important things. And, you know, I just want to say that your, your organization in D.C., you're doing a, a fantastic job and representing people like myself and many other people out there who just are very... Uh, uh, just incredibly passionate about organic and that having high quality foods means so much to us. So thank you so much for all you're doing. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for what you're doing, educating the public about there and, and absolutely promoting organic and beyond. That's, that, that's what we're all about. And just remember to buy well, eat well, and most importantly, live well. Till next time. Mm -hmm.